Hey, hey, this is Mark back with episode 9. We are still filling in. Sorry, no, we are not filling in. We are still blending the color from our original fill in. <clears throat> and we still just have to continue clicking for now. We're just still going to have to do our right, right, left, left technique. We're still going to do some color com combinations between anchor points, and we're just going to keep smoothing out our intended color and our intended value across the face but we don't want that value to be sporadic we want it to be controlled and we want it to be smooth and we are going to get that by doing this technique where we go across the rows select color from the left across the row of each point blend it and then go back across the same line and then fill it from the right color. Pick a color on the right and then keep going across back and forth up and down until you really eliminate that weird splotchiness. Unfortunately, a lot of this is clicking, so there isn't really much I could be saying other than the same thing, because we're really just doing the same thing, but I will stop the fast forward when I have something useful to say, but for now, we're just going to keep clicking. So I don't really like the results I'm getting under this eye right here on, on the shadow um, by going left and right. So I'm actually going to select a few of these points like these two and then group join uh, um, group color them with color below because the color below is a little bit lighter. And I feel like if I start sampling a little bit from down there, I will start getting the uh, shade I'm looking for. And you can see we're starting to brighten up those points. Make it a little bit more uh, softer, softer of a change from the shadow under the eye from the highlight on the cheek. Seems a little too harsh, so I'm going to try and brighten it up a little bit. A little less contrast, less sharp there. You can see it's starting to do a number on that weird shadow there. So I'm going to select these two points, then make them the same color, and then I'm going to keep sampling from under, keep blending upward. Got to match these two colors to about this shade right here. It's very similar to the technique that we uh, were doing with left and right. Um, in this case, I do need to sample from the bottom to get the right shade I'm looking for, the right tone of color. We're always zooming out. We're always checking our work. We don't really know what it, it's kind of hard to see what it looks like from this close up. So in order to see what in order to see what looks off, I tend to zoom out a lot. And you'll see me doing that a lot. I'm going to leave this nose boundary uh, because I will be patching that. I'm going to take all these points here and I'm going to make it that dark tone about right about right there but I'm gonna actually level this one out so it's a smoother blend Don't forget to save your work often. You don't want to have a crash. We're dealing with gradient mesh, the files, and uh, files typically get large and they typically do a damper to 
your processor and your graphics cards. Too many read and writes, too many actions, too many zooms or anything like that can throw the system off. So, and especially based on your computer spec. So please make sure you're saving um, during this lengthy and long process. So I'm just gonna stop the fast forward here. I just wanna talk about the forehead in particular because although it's not smooth, we have a lot of random color variations. Like we have random darkness, um, most likely selected a dark pixel and a cluster of light ones by accident. So all these like random, like this random yellow, like I'm not saying there can't be highlights, like specular highlights or um, defined shadows, but a lot of these colors like here are just kind of um, way too dark to be there. Um, and are just kind of getting in the way of the clean look of the drawing. So I'm gonna clean up a lot of the unwanted color um, first, and then I'm specifically gonna go into smoothening. Um, so let's continue doing that. And this is obviously up to you. Um, there's really no, again, right way to do this, but I'm hoping that you have some sort of preference of how you want your mesh to look, and then you strive to, to keep it that way. 
and based on my preference i don't really want any of these random streaks in there um, or random colors that seem unorthodox like just random mistakes I'm actually going to move these uh, this line up a little bit. Hey, what's going on? I am back, and for the most part, although it's not perfect, um, I would say primarily we are done smoothening out the base layer of the face, and I'd say I can move on. Um, I mean, I'm going to probably smooth up a little more over here, maybe touch up the shadow over here a little bit more. Um, and this could be done throughout the entire project, but for now, I'd really like to start moving on to new shapes. Uh, such as the lips or the nose or the eye, you know what I mean? Whatever else I got to fill in uh, So we can start getting more a gauge of different types of uh, the different types of shapes and the different types of processes that making these shapes um, Hold so again, I appreciate you sticking through with all this color blending before I end this episode I just want to do a quick uh, recap on the last face layer that we have so i'm going to show that i'm going to hide the above layer we've been working on and then we can really see the touch-up work that we've done and how much better it looks it really looks real now um so when we hide it it's not going to be perfectly matched to the face shadow wise you know i mean we built the structure to resemble the light of the Im image um, but when we go back and smooth in a drawing, you know, vector mesh format, it's going to be a little bit different. But for the most part, it is damn accurate um, to our lighting and shading and the value on this face. And I appreciate you sticking through it and I'll see you on episode 10. Thank you for watching.